Uh, teardown time. Uh, this is a credit card, or at least it was a credit card until I put it in some acetone. Uh, and the reason I did that is I wanted to extract the electronics. Uh, this is both a contact and contactless card, and I suspect it's going to be a really good example of a secure computing element. Uh, let's just uh, see here. This is the contacts, of course, you'd always see on a credit card. If you flip it over, you can, of course, recognize it's a circuit board, and there's a little integrated circuit there. We'll zoom into that in a second and analyze it in depth. Uh, the other interesting thing is that you can see some very fine wire, and this is the antenna for the uh, contactless portion of the uh, device. Uh, interestingly, this credit card is quite sophisticated. It looks like this one piece of silicon does both uh, the contact and contactless uh, variation. So let's uh, take a look at this uh, assembly a bit closer. So this is the uh, circuit board that sits behind the gold contacts on the credit card. Uh, in the center there is an integrated circuit. Uh, it's basically a microcontroller, but it's a very special one. It's meant for high security applications. In a moment, we'll take a zoom into it and we'll actually see uh, some of the very unique attributes it has. Uh, there's a clear bit of epoxy which holds the integrated circuit on the board and protects the gold bond wires that go to the pads. Uh, and then what else we see? Uh, there's, of course, that little wire there zigzagging back and forth. Uh, that's the antenna for the uh, touch function of this credit card. Uh, and then below all that, of course, is a black circuit board. Now let's uh, drop that whole thing into uh, an acid uh, that'll eat away uh, the components. And uh, we'll get this picture here. Uh, the acid's quite unique. It only takes away the epoxy of the circuit board and the blob on top of the integrated circuit. It uh, also dissolves the uh, copper that's in the uh, antenna wire. But it leaves this photograph here. Uh, of course, you can see now a fiberglass weave. And of course, that's why you call circuit boards fiberglass because that's indeed what they are. Uh, the integrated circuit cord is, is now sitting by itself, and then you can, of course, see the gold bond pads which are left over. Uh, very high quality assembly, as you might imagine. Uh, these credit cards are actually very well designed and very uh, robust. Uh, lots of gold on them to uh, ensure that the contacts have good long service life. Let's uh, now uh, take the microscope out and start looking at the integrated circuit from uh, a much closer detail. So here's the uh, top level metal of the uh, chip. Now, uh, to sort of sketch out what we're looking at, almost certainly this is a microcontroller. It's going to go to CPU section. It's going to have a sort of ROM section, which holds the uh, program and uh, probably the secrets. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of scratch pad RAM. There's going to be some utility functions for uh, power on resets and uh, some clock distribution. And of course, then there's going to be the, the wireless function LE as well. Um, now, let's just come back to this top metal. Uh, you really can't see very much because that's uh, everything's coated with metal and that makes a chip very hard to analyze. And that's not a mistake. Uh, they've definitely done this for a very good reason. Uh, it makes it very hard to actually figure out what's going on in the chip. And, of course, that is your first step with security. But what can we see at this layer? Uh, we can, of course, see the uh, bond pads for the uh, bond wires. That was go off to the contacts or to the antenna. Uh, we can see the uh, power distribution rails. Yeah, you can see those larger metallization that go to the blocks. That's basically carrying power around the chip. Now, the other blocks, let's see, we're going to go to another layer uh, called the diffusion layer. Basically, I strip all the metal off the chip, and we can sort of see now the uh, gates below. Uh, and there's two highlighted areas where there's significant uh, logic. Uh, now, undoubtedly, that's going to be the uh, processor section. Um, now, if I zoom in a little bit more, you can see the gates are very, very easily uh, uh, discerned. Um, I'm only using an optical microscope here, and that tells me that these gates are actually quite large. So we're looking at probably a fairly uh, modest process node. And I suspect that's not a mistake on the bank's part. I'm sure that this particular design has been extremely heavily studied, uh, looking for any vulnerabilities. Uh, they've chosen a very low gate count so they can analyze the heck out of it uh, to make sure that you can't inject malicious code. Um, and uh, the uh, secrets held inside the EEPROM are very hard to extract. Because, of course, that's the nature of this particular microcontroller. It's all about um, being a secure compute environment. If we come up to the upper left of the chip, uh, that almost certainly is a flash memory storage area. And uh, you can sort of see that there's an array highlighted there, but there's a lot of support circuitry around of that. That's very typical uh, to program a flash memory element in about 20 or so volts. So there'll be some interesting high voltage shifting logic and such not going on there. And if we take a further look into the array, we can start counting down uh, the size of it. Um, you can see 33 by 35 elements, and of course that's not very binary. Uh, and of course that is because uh, there's almost certainly going to be ECC protection on these particular bytes. Zooming into each of the memory cells, we can see it's about 36 bits by 66 bits. Same thing, uh, not binary because uh, there's going to be probably ECC and uh, redundancy going on here. Uh, basically each block is uh, 256 bytes, and uh, 
you can then uh, figure out you have about 256 kilobytes on the actual chip, which is an entirely appropriate size for a, uh, storing a program plus all the secrets the chip needs to hold. Zooming back out to the whole diffusion layer, what else can we see? Um, a lot of memories highlighted there. Uh, obviously, you'll need some scratch pad RAM and you see some register RAM for the processor. Uh, the uh, section highlighted uh, in the lower right is uh, the analog function. Let's just zoom in a little bit. It's uh, all of the uh, wireless uh, capabilities of the chip. You can see there's large blobs at the diffusion layer. And basically, there was capacitors uh, that were uh, made out of metal. It's, of course, been stripped away and fairly large transistors as well. And of course that provides that, that really interesting touchless capability as well. Well, there we have it. On the surface, of course, looks like any other uh, microcontroller, except as soon as you start poking any aspect of it, uh, the theme of security becomes readily apparent. Uh, clearly someone spent a tremendous amount of effort here on this design. And uh, of course really builds uh, confidence that uh, security was really baked in from the beginning with these kind of chips. I guess that's no surprise. That was, of course, their primary role. So hopefully that was of interest.